This is a 10-year-old little boy with a very advanced uh, glaucoma in his left eye. Uh, his glaucoma is believed to be a, due to a mixture of steroid use and along with his uveitis, probably uh, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, also called JIA. He presented with a very high pressure. We measured the pressure of 52 millimeters mercury when we saw him yesterday. And we've decided to go ahead and implant an Ahmed glaucoma valve uh, in his eye. This is a more typical implantation of an Ahmed valve implant, and I'm going to put it in superior temporally, which is the usual position. The choice of putting an Ahmed implant in him instead of a different kind of implant or doing a trabeculectomy is in part because he does have a cataract, uh, which is the result of his uveitis and steroids. And the thought behind putting an Ahmed uh, glaucoma valve in is twofold. First of all, he's definitely going to need cataract surgery at some point. And at least in uveitis patients, uh, regular trabeculectomies will usually fail after cataract surgery because of the significant amount of inflammation in the eye. Uh, the other reason I chose an Ahmed implant in this patient is that in patients with uveitis, and particularly uh, those with juvenile idiopathic arthritis, um, they tend to have periods where they have inflammation, uh, they hyposecrete or stop making aqueous, and their pressure drops uh, almost to zero. Um, because the Ahmed valve uh, implant has a valve, or at least a flow restrictor, um, they are less likely to develop a flat chamber uh, when there are episodes of inflammation and hyposecretion. Here you can see that I'm flushing the tube to make sure that it works. Um, these devices have a valve system made of two leaflets of silicone uh, rubber and they tend to stick during manufacturing so it's very important to prime these tubes um, as the two leaflets can stick together uh, and we need to remove any obstruction inside the tube to ensure uh, that the valve uh, is working and there is smooth flow of fluid through the system. I'm picking up the implant. Uh, go ahead and give me the calipers. This is set at uh, 10 millimeters, it's probably a bit further than that. I like it to be about 12 millimeters uh, back from the limbus, so this is good. I'll take the 80 nylon. So I'm fixating this device about 10 to 12 millimeters back with nylon. It's important to know that nylon is not a permanent suture, but it lasts long enough for scars to develop uh, through the various fixation holes in such a way that the implant will not move. so you can see how much easier it is uh, to do this right side up. I'm going to rotate these knots. I generally rotate them into the holes. This is to make sure that nothing uh, will bother the patient uh, with uh, sutures poking out through the conjunctiva or irritating.
And now I'll tuck the tube out of the way so um, that it's not in my way as I do the rest of the dissection and don't do anything uh, inadvertently that cuts the tube or disrupts it. I'm uh, going to be very careful not to create a buttonhole, uh, so I mostly do blunt dissection once I get into the correct uh, tissue plane. I'll take the crescent blade now and uh, use this to create a long tunnel. Uh, over the last year or so, I've started making scleral flaps, uh, especially in children, because I want them to have as much natural tissue uh, as possible over uh, the tube implant. Answer to the question, when you do the scleral tunnel, you've been dividing it into two or three segments, correct? Um, that's what I'm doing right now, but I guess you can make one long tunnel, but it's a little hard at the very end to make the needle entry at the eye. Uh, so this is the compromise I've come up with. So let's figure out how long this tube is going to be. I will uh, trim the tube to the appropriate length. I trim the tube with a forward-facing uh, bevel, and that makes it easier to get in through uh, the needle tract. It's important not to make the tube too long, uh, although it's useful to make them a little bit longer in children uh, to accommodate for uh, growth of the eye. The tube is inserted through the scleral flap. Now I'm going to make a paracentesis incision. This assures that I have access to the anterior chamber if I should need it. The anterior chamber uh, is entered uh, using generally a 23 gauge disposable needle. Um, I usually use a 23 gauge disposable needle in younger patients, especially children. I will use a 25 gauge disposable needle as the uh, tissue is more flexible. Uh, the tube is inserted into the anterior chamber uh, using the needle uh, track. Insertion of the tube is one of the most challenging parts of the procedure. 
it's important that the tube um, not be too far anterior because the tube rubbing against the cornea will eventually cause the cornea to fail and in many of these eyes the endothelial function is less than perfect. I'd encourage, uh, if you're going to try to uh, start doing tube implants, it's important to, uh, in my opinion, to start off with pseudophagic patients where as you pass the needle uh, into the eye, you're less likely to hit uh, the crystalline lens. Sometimes I'll do a small peripheral iridectomy, uh, particularly in patients with angle closure where the iris is drawn up uh, forward in the anterior chamber angle. And then point the tube through the iridectomy so that the tube is nicely uh, posterior. So now we'll take a piece of uh, donor pericardium. I position it so that the rough surface is on the bottom and I like to uh, trim it uh, making a slight curve uh, like this so it matches up with the limbus. It's much easier to cut the pericardium when it's dry is very difficult to cut and trim to an appropriate shape once it becomes soft. Uh, but once it's in position, I make the pericardium wet and it sticks down very nicely. I then suture the pericardium uh, to the sclera, uh, securing the implant. Other materials uh, can be used to cover the implant, including uh, donor sclera or cornea. Uh, many places in the United States uh, use corneas that are not of transplant quality, um, but cornea itself is quite thick, so one needs to cut it uh, about half thickness um, to have it not create uh, problems on the ocular surface. So at this point, I will start closing. In answer uh, to the question, no need to fix the tube to the sclera with stay sutures. Um, I've started to do this recently. Uh, it's a little bit faster. At home, I use a slightly different, smaller crescent blade that's only one and a quarter millimeters in size and I find this is a very nice uh, way to make a small and narrow uh, tunnel. Uh, the tube doesn't tend to move and it is uh, embedded within uh, living tissue so that it uh, doesn't um, uh, erode as easily. Uh, there's a nice uh, vascularized tissue, uh, forms a, a nice scar over the tube and prevents it from moving. On the first post-operative day, I expect to see a formed uh, uh, anterior chamber, but it might be uh, shallow. Uh, I would not expect it to be flat, but it might be shallow just because he's uveitic uh, and he might uh, under-secrete aqueous. This is common for uh, uveitic patients to have shallow chambers uh, because they'll often develop choroidal effusions uh, more easily. 
The other reason for the shallow chamber in him might be because he started at a very high pressure of over 50 millimeters, and whenever you drop the pressure that much, you're much more likely to develop a choroidal effusion. Uh, the other reason I chose an Ahmed implant in this patient is that in patients with uveitis, and particularly uh, those with juvenile idiopathic arthritis, um, they tend to have periods where they have inflammation, uh, they hyposecrete or stop making aqueous and their pressure drops uh, almost to zero. Um, because the Ahmed valve uh, implant has a valve or at least a flow restriction, restrictor, um, they are less likely to have develop a flat chamber uh, when there are episodes of inflammation and hyposecretion. Uh, my experience with children and young adults with JIA is that they go back and forth with periods of inflammation and very low pressures and then on to very high pressures occasionally. These children sometimes do very well with some of the steroid-sparing agents like Remicade and Methotrexate. Uh, so it will be important for this young man uh, to be followed by a rheumatologist um, who can manage those uh, medications and reduce his need for systemic or even uh, ocular steroids. And when he has his uh, cataract removed, it will be important for his ophthalmologist to uh, hit him very hard with lots of steroids uh, for the perioperative uh, care. Um, as you can see, he has a little blood in the anterior chamber, uh, so he will almost certainly have a small hyphema on the first postoperative day, uh, and I expect the pressure to be between, be between about 8 and 15 on his first post-op day. I generally uh, place a subconjunctival injection of a steroid and antibiotic.